Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Tonight we are back with another episode of Turn Back the Clock Tuesday in which we are heading back to the early 80s with a box of 1982 tops, searching for some key rookies, and some Hall of Famers key rookies, I should say, like Cal Ripken Jr., Lee Smith, and there's some other ones we're searching for as well. Also a nice, uh, pretty valuable error card that can be found in this set as well. I love early 80s tops cards, I love the designs. Um, this is a box I've never opened. I don't know if I've ever actually opened a pack of these, but that's what we're looking for tonight. Uh, I feel like I need to change up from uh, all the newer cards I've been seeing and I've been kind of hung over for the last several days. And not hung over from uh, drinking booze, but hung over from opening too many packs of newer cards. So I figure we got to go back as far back as possible and might as well make it a box of 82 tops. These are pretty expensive. Uh, they generally go for around 300 bucks plus nowadays. So um, not too many out there on the market, and they're kind of hard to come by. So without further ado, that's what we're doing tonight. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm very excited to check this out and see if we can pull some of these key rookies and uh, see what else we come across. We have four participants. We have John in the top left. Our buddy Corey J in the top right. Jay Hadley in the bottom left, who's actually going live after this with 87 Don Russ, a double box break. And then Lee H, a.k.a. Criterium Racer, in the bottom right. So thank you guys all for being here. We're going to start out where we always do. And we're doing the top left. That's going to be John A. And uh, maybe we'll eat the gum for good measure. Hopefully we don't see a... Uh, C sheet in here, or any funky business like that. Dave M, what's happening? What's going on, all you guys? So, first glance, I took a look at these uh, earlier, too, just to make sure that there wasn't any foul play at the packs. Doesn't seem to be at all, so let's get to ripping. See if we can find ourselves a Kyle Ripken. And the big, nice, thick gum there. Hopefully it doesn't claim any of the key cards we're after, but very awesome design. You don't see, uh, like I said, you don't see too many packs of these floating around these days. But John H., good luck to you, man. You are on the clock here. Torn ACL, thanks, man. You're going to have one of these sticker cards in every single pack. For Jeff Burrows. But the, um, the Pascal Perez, it's actually a pretty valuable error card still to this day. It usually goes for around 100 bucks. Um, his Bucko's card, it's uh, no position, is listed on the front. Denny Martinez, nothing too notable in that first pack for John A. Moving in to the second one. 15 cards a pack, and I still feel compelled to try this gum out. I don't want to slop on that while... I'm trying to talk and go through these, so. Paul L. says, eat it. Maybe we'll see a Dan Quisenberry in here for you, Paul L. Hoping so, at least. And there's a nice Steve Carlton coming up. Steve Trout. Carlton in action. Cool looking card. RM says, this is BBCE. This box is actually not. This came from a, a reliable source. And there's Greg Nettles. Still looking for his error card. Actually found it in a box 81. This is the second oldest box I've ever opened. Actually third. I've done 81 Don Russ and 81 Fleer. Those are both uh, Lupinella. Both relatively inexpensive. You can usually get 81 Fleer and 81 Don Russ for under 100 bucks. Usually around like 80 bucks. Sometimes a little cheaper. Mike Klassen, what's happening? Pack two in the books. Jay's Openings, what's happening? Like I said, Jay's Openings is doing 80, what, two boxes, 87 Don Russ tonight. Searching for some of the key rookies in that set. I always loved 87 Don Russ. I think he's live at 9.30. I'm going to head over there after this. Frank D, what's happening? Gem Mint Mantle. Says, I wonder if these little cards listen to any of the Beckett's. I don't believe they're in the Almanac. I really doubt it. Usually that would be the go-to. There's Don Sutton. He's a couple cards in this set. Also, uh, other notable rookies, Terry Francona, definitely a good one. Uh, Chili Davis is in here. Kent Herbeck, there's a nice Mike Schmidt all-star card. And Dave Parker. 
And Bo Diaz is the sticker in this one. Upper deck, what's happening? The gum still does look good. It definitely does. I, I, if you guys want me to try a piece of that, I'm not going to turn you down. Turn you down on the offer. Yeah, Kyle Ripken, it could be in this box. We're hoping so. George Foster, seen a few Hall of Famers so far. And speaking of Hall of Famers, there's Tom Seaver and Jack Morris, 81 victory leaders. Cool looking card. Never seen that one before. Pete Vukovic also on there. Steve McCaddy. Chew away. <laughs> Tim Gibson says, how do you get all these boxes of old cards, man? I actually picked this one up at um, the Honey Hole not too long ago. I was going to get 83 Fleer uh, Cello. And actually, when I tried to buy it, I didn't have enough cash on me. So I came back the next weekend thinking I was going to buy 83 Fleer Cello, and he had 82 tops instead. And I was like, well, that's pretty awesome. I'd love to open a box of those. So that's how it came to be. Paul also, did you get sick of Mondesi inserts so you resumed <laughs> the Wath and Quisenberry hunt? Uh, we'll be back on the Mondesi inserts probably next week. There's a nice Gibson. It's actually a second-year Gibson. Cool-looking card, Willie Randolph. And a Carlton base. Cool one. The cards are in pretty pristine condition, too. I don't see any bum corners or anything. Dave Parker, all-star card. Mike Schmidt in action. So if you, I mean, if you, if you guys do PSA, if you pull a Ripken and you get a high grade, like a, you know, a 10 PSA, 10 uh, Smith or Ripken, usually around 800 bucks to a thousand dollars. Willie Aikens is a sticker of this one. RM says Mike Schmidt had some really great stats back in the day. A couple got cut off there. JJ says, John, I went to the honey hole two weeks ago and he had zero boxes. Lucky you. Yeah, it's kind of hit or miss there, man. Um, honey hole will be shutting down here pretty soon. And it's going to be like a, I don't know, kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A broken piece of gum. It's not going to be an actual consistent location anymore. He's just going to uh, inform different customers like when he's doing flea markets like setting up outside bill matlock jack clark so i think uh i think that's gonna start like the end of february he's gonna be done there we ran off which kind of sucks because that's like my go-to spot every weekend i always i end up going there and finding stuff that i'm that i'm after dwight evans here's a henderson sticker cool one i've never seen these before i don't think till today And I'm missing some stuff in the comments. I'm sorry. Don Blomdahl, what's happening, man? Says, greeting, John. How are you tonight? Don Blomdahl, thank you, man, for popping in here. I haven't seen you in a while. I am doing well. How are you, Donald? Anyone pitching leaders? JJ says, John, is he keeping his spot at Altoona? Ah, uh, he's supposed to, as far as I know. I don't really go out there too often. Yeah, he's supposed to keep his spot there, but uh, won't be at the usual location anymore. Chuck Chicago says, is Ripken on a standalone card or sharing on a rookie card? This one, he's actually sharing it. The more valuable and rare Ripken rookie um, is the 82 Tops traded. That's one I picked up like a few weeks ago. Usually still sells for around 90, 100 bucks. Come across that one. There's a Fisk. I always liked that card. I had that one when I was a little kid. Pat Putnam. Kind of an odd-looking card there. Don Blomdahl says, Doing well, getting ready for dinner and jumping around the channels. Well, thanks for popping in, man. I appreciate that. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with Don Blomdahl. Um, if you're not subbed to him, definitely check him out. He puts a ton of card videos out there. Huey Brooks and Mike Scott, 81 Pitching Leaders. And hopefully we see, uh, I'd like to see like a base Henderson in here and a Nolan Ryan. There's a nice Pete Rose and Carlton. Cool looking card there for John A. No sign of any of the rookie cards yet. And there's Criterium Racer. Thanks, man. Criterium Racer actually has a spot in uh, this break. I want to say he has the bottom right corner coming up later on. So thanks for being here, man. Hopefully we can pull you some nice stuff. I think Criterion Racer said this was like his favorite set. I know Jay Hadley says this is one of his favorite sets too. All the early 80 top sets were so awesome. It's 
T Dog Shay, what's happening, buddy? Yeah, I haven't got a chance to go back and uh, see if I have your cell number, but I will do that. I have a big stack of golf cards to give you. We'll meet up sometime. So if we do find Henderson, this is what you're going to be looking for. One of these kind of cards. Dave Henderson in the middle on here. I used to like Dave Henderson back in the 80s. So Griffey Sr. Bobby Brown. Don Sutton in action. And nothing else too crazy in there. My girlfriend Brittany's in here. What's happening? Two packs left for John A. Hoping for a nice Ripken for you. There was a point in time where... The, I remember when Lee Smith got in the Hall of Fame. His PSA 10 rookie in this set was like going for a thousand bucks. Usually you can buy that card ungraded for a buck or two at card shows. The Ripken rookie unslabbed is usually about 15, 20 bucks in this set. And there's a nice Bruce Suter. Very, very hairy man. And a Winfield All Star. Cool one. Mike Torres. Adam J says, hey, John, love the old cards, love your breaks. Can you explain why Walmart put exclusive Reese Hoskins highlight cards in their Tops 2020 packs? Laugh out loud, really. Yeah, I'm not sure why they decided to go with Reese on those. Your guess is as good as mine as far as that goes. Hey, AF, what's happening, man? Vance Law. I never liked Vance Law. I used to be a huge Johnny Ray fan, though, back in the 80s. Probably one of my first favorite players. Before Jose leaned, yeah, there was Johnny Ray. Vance Law. <laughs> it looks so nerdy. It's actually a Tim Wallach rookie card. That's a cool one. Like, uh, what is that? The one episode, what is it? The, it's some sort of Yahoo Sports or sports cards that was, where uh, Donnie Baseball's on there, rips a pack of like, what is it, like 88 tops or something like that and talks about Tim Wallach. Nothing but nice things to say about him. Very, very retro looking photography Dave M says Vance Law is a slam dunk through the mail signer he sent back to me in like a week nice guy that's pretty awesome never would have thought that Dave Kingman there's a nice Pete Rose and this is a, uh, I thought it was a Lee Smith rookie for a second there it looks very similar on the sides Pete Rose in action nice looking cards actually Raleigh Eastwick and Dawson Hibby Brooks and there's a nice one Nolan Ryan Bass it's actually just talking about that card. Very, very nice. I like that one a lot. And some of these cards, you got to check them out because definitely can be known to have blank backs. There's somebody on Craigslist in my area that had the Ripken rookie that had a blank back. Um, I was I almost bought it. It was a pretty interesting card. Never heard of it before. Rich Dodson. Very generic looking sticker. And here's a nice one, too. Schmidt and Murray. John Mayberry and Mike Davis. Definitely a lot of good Hall of Famers in that stack. No rookies we're after. Not yet for John A. But uh, definitely some decent cards. I think that Nolan Ryan was probably my favorite one in that stack. Put those off to the side here carefully. And we will dive into stack two for ripping for Ripkins. Jamal Khalil says, love the stash on Murray. That is definitely epic. JJ says, never seen any 82 blank backs. Yeah, it's very weird. Like they have, There's actual blank backs that exist, and there's actual ones that have like the green back and like the, uh, the template for the backs, but there's no stats printed. That's how that Ripken is that I saw on uh, Craigslist. I was like, wow. I think he wanted like 40 bucks for it. I think it's still on there, too. I might actually buy it. I don't know. But if you beat me to it, so be it. But that will be a cool one for the PC. But I definitely want to get the Pascal Perez uh, no position on front. Um, that's what I'm going to be looking for from now on. Corey J, good luck to you, man. And there he is. His pull that fire tonight, brother. Thanks for doing this break and for everything you do, buddy. Ripping for Ripkins. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I saw you just posted a video a little bit ago. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Um, was it, was it 91 leaf or 92 leaf? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Ruby for Ripkins, you're not subbed to him. Definitely check him out. Great guy. Does a lot of older box rips on his channel. And his favorite player is Ripkins. So hopefully we can see one for you tonight here. Joe Youngblood sticker card with a blue border. These gum sticks are huge. 
<laughs> they definitely are. Should make a separate video eating all this gum. There's a nice Johnny Bench in action. Haven't seen that one yet. A little bit off on the cut there. Cool bread. Like that one. It's a nice collation here. I don't think we've seen any repeats at all whatsoever. Some featured stars. No one really too notable in there. Crazy, crazy looking do on John Henry Johnson. Never seen that one before. Jim Rice and Joe Ferguson. First pack down. Paul L says, John Henry Johnson is a rad man. He looks like a rad man. Looks like the kind of guy I'd like to be friends with. Looks like a real maniac. Real ladies man. Samuel, what's happening? Jem Mintz is Ripken or Yaz time. I hope so, man. Hope we see both of them tonight. Johnny Walk and Fuss. So Dave Stewart rookie card can be found in here. Dave Getty. Ken Landro. Blue border sticker. Can't tell if that's like uh, the print or if that guy is just absolutely submerged in freckles. Mike Griffin, interesting looking card. Is it Tug McGraw? <laughs> Richard Lloyd says, is Eric trying to troll you being live at the same time? I think he was planning on being live. I, I, I don't know. I didn't even know he was. There's a Henderson. Cool one. And Steve Sachs rookie card. Yeah, that was Frank Hunter for a second. That's actually Brett Butler's rookie, so that's kind of cool. Decent one there. Sachs and Butler. We really know not too much value to either one of those guys, but still uh, cool pulls nonetheless. Nick Baker, what's happening, man? You have to put all these gum sticks aside and eat those sometimes. A nice Fergie. Hal McRae and Dave Collins sticker. Come on, Cal, Corey says. Uh, hopefully he's in here somewhere. Dave Stewart rookie card pops up. Not a high-dollar card, but uh, this one's it's a cool one regardless. You should buy that card for a few bucks. And Chili Davis in the same pack after Reggie Smith in action. Chili Davis rookie card with nasty, unforgiving gum stand in the back of him. Paul Ellis' Quisenberry sticker would be a dream. <laughs> I don't doubt that that's a real thing in this pack. I would almost guarantee that that probably exists. And I would almost guarantee that we'll see him in this box at some point. Jamal says some nice centered cards. There definitely are some good ones in here. I haven't seen any like, absolutely terrible cuts yet. Ken Singleton. So, so far, so good. There's a Clint Hurdle. Dale Barra. I used to be a big fan of Dale Barra. Enos Cabal. He knows Cable. I forget how you even pronounce his name. Ken O'Burkfell. And Mike Armstrong, looking like the BTK killer. Larry Boa. So, seen a lot of rookies. And there is the second Nolan Ryan highlights card. Pretty awesome. And nicely centered. But a freaking gum stain has claimed him. Yeah, 82 Ricky Henderson. Uh,. The regular base card is an awesome one. I like that one a lot. <laughs> Corey says gum stain middle finger. That definitely is a hard pill to swallow. Had to be no one on the back of that one, huh? It sucks. Freaking gum stain. Mike Scott is claimed in this pack. Dave Steeb leading off. And there's a Jim Palmer in action. Cool one there. I haven't seen that one yet. And there's a Fernando second year. One Eichelberger. Actually has an error card in what it's 82 Don Russ. Penny Hose will take the gum stain off, Ron John said. I have heard that. I don't know if I've tried that yet or not. Dusty Baker and Bert Hooten. Nick Baker says, Do you send anything to PSA? I do not. I never have, uh, but maybe someday I will actually. Tommy John. Seen a lot of these feature stars, but no Ripken yet. Fernando highlights card and Mike Scott. Yeah, I have yet to send anything to PSA, but um, 
definitely might do that in the future. I don't know. I think that'd be cool and be kind of fun. Maybe somewhere down the road I will do that. Corey does. Yeah, so he might be sending some of these in. And you get that gum stain off. Jack Morris on top here, all-star card. Carney Lansford. Lazinski in action with a uh, printing smudge. Kind of cool. If you're into that kind of thing. Bob Boone. I feel a lot of blemishes on these early 80s cards. Barry Bonnell. I don't remember him. For the Blue Jays. Rick Roden. Lance Parrish. John Montefusco. And Ron Davis highlights. Succumb to the gum stain. We still got three packs for Corey. Let's see. We'll find a Ripken in here, man. James F says, I'm thinking PSA is close to 10 bucks a card. Yeah, if you're a member, if you pay like the $150 a year fee, then it's like around that price. If you just send it in single cards and you don't pay for the membership, then I think it's like 20 bucks a piece. But I think it depends on uh, value of the card overall as well. Brian Downing, weird looking smile on his face there. Jim Bibby, there's a Stargell in action. Nice one. Cool looking card. I don't know if I've ever seen that one before. Love those retro Pirates uniforms. Gary Maddox. Pete Vukovic, and there's a Pete Rose. Nice. I don't think we've seen that one yet. We saw the all-star card, but that is a good-looking one. RM says Pirates should go back to those uniforms. I agree, man. I like those a lot. Al Oliver in action, and there's a Molitor. That one's kind of cut bad, but has a little bit of gum residue in the back. Paul also says Vukovic was a Pirates coach at one time. I definitely remember that. And two packs left. We got a Johnny Bench on top here. Not a bad one at all. Luckily, it's on the good side with no gum and the checklist. Fell victim to that this time around. Not a bad one. And a Brett. All-star Phil Necro. It's a hell of a pack so far. Steve Renko, the huge dip in it looks like. Either that or it's Big League Chew. You be the judge of that. Len Sakata. And Joel Youngblood is the sticker. John Castino and Fernando Arroyo. Glenn Hubbard. Greg Nettles. And a checklist card. One pack left. Corey, where is that Ripken hiding at? Might have been here somewhere. Hopefully. Ryan says that bench is my best car when I was like eight. That is a cool one, man. I think my best car when I was eight was... Uh, let's, let's see here. Maybe not eight, but maybe like six. I don't know what my best car was. I was like eight. Probably like Frank Thomas rookie year. Todd Zeal rookie year or something like that. But late 80s, there's definitely, I think, Casey Stangle, 62 tops. I want to say my dad gave it to me, and I like cherished it. I still have it. It's in a very, very yellow stained top loader. I still have it upstairs right now. Tony Pena, that might be his rookie or one of them. There he is our buddy, Rusty K. And there's Frank Cona rookie card. Nice. Ken Landro or Landro again. And there is the Frank Cona rookie. I was trying to see if there was a blemish on Brad Mills. Um, looks to be like it's part of his shirt, but um, nice Frank Cona. Always like that card. It's definitely off center, but uh, still one of the cool rookies we're looking for in here. Not the one we're after. It looks like we might have a Ripken short print in here. <laughs> I don't know why that one car is upside down. It's kind of weird. Cecil Cooper and Pete Vukovic there. Jamal says, use women's pantyhose to rub it off. It works. Done it numerous times. Pissed off my wife used her pantyhose. I have heard that. I've never tried it, but I've definitely heard it. Joy of Cardboard, what's happening? Says, I'm just in time for a Frank Cunner rookie. That is a nice one. I like that one. And a Pete Rose all-star card. Another nice one there. And not the rookies we're looking for. Jesse Barfield robbed you of a possible Ripken, Corey. But uh, I'd say he's still got a nice stack there. A lot of good Hall of Famers. 
No Lee Smith and no Ripken yet. Just a ton of 82 tops dandruff on there. <laughs> Jesse Barfield, the one year wonder. Yeah, isn't that about right? Put those off the side. And Jay Hadley is up next. I think he's still in here. Been missing a bunch of these uh, comments. I apologize for that. It's not every day you get to open 82 tops pack, so I'm <laughs> really, really soaking it up right now. I have to know how many boxes of 82 tops are still sitting out there. I mean, a lot of people, most people, I don't know, would probably put this box in their closet and sit on it for another 20 years and then have it be double or triple in value, but I can't stand doing that. I like to rip him open. So, Jay Hadley, good luck to you, man. He's still in here, and he is still planning on going live after this, doing 87 Don Russ. Hopefully we see a bunch of some of our favorite rookie cards out of there. Rusty Staub. And just getting some repeats on these stickers. Young Blood again. Hoskin Powell. Another Jim Rice. Joe Ferguson. And there's a Rod Carew. It's a cool one. I haven't seen that one yet. Ryan Hilton says how much for a box 82? Like around 300 bucks. BBC, I think they're like 350. And Aussie Virgil. Tim Blackwell. Nice Carew in the first pack for JH. Hopefully we find some other nice stuff in here. Nick Baker says, are the stickers worth anything? Not to my knowledge. Probably not. Hey, Kevin, what's happening? Yeah, I don't really think that you'd get too much for those stickers. You'd probably get more for the gum sticks, honestly. Cecil Cooper leading off here. And there's a Gidry. Dave Concepcion looks very confused. Doesn't look like he's ready for that picture to be taken at all. National League All-Star card. <laughs> I think we have a new Bad Omen on this channel. Paul L., back me up on that one. I think we got a new Bad Omen here. I think it is a definite. Bill Gullickson. Pitching leaders. Another Butler rookie card, Steve Bedrosian. This is actually an error card, too. I'm not sure if this one is or not, but uh, I know... There is an error uh, parallel of that out there. Bill, Bill Madlock and Carney Lansford. Batting leaders and Joe Morgan in action. Yeah, Ken Landro. I, 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 the name sounds familiar, but I don't remember him very well at all. But he's definitely uh, a new bad omen on here. Add him to the ranks with the rest of them. It's the inner horror in me, but I uh, feel bad about ripping these packs open keep all those pack wrappers <laughs> RM says rest in peace Joe Morgan loved him as an announcer and Dave Collins again so the uh, sticker set must be like a 10 card set from what it seems like Steve Garvey in action haven't seen that one yet and there's a nice one Nolan Ryan and Art Howe cool looking card Nolan Ryan always looked like he mean business very cool one. Dave Stapleton, there's that freckle card again, so it is not a printing, printing blemish. Mike Griffin was just covered in freckles. Can't say I remember him either. <laughs> Chuck Chicago's big fat fingers. Yeah, I need to have Brittany come over here and open these instead. With her tiny hands, so you guys can see the names and the photography and the cards. <laughs> RMM. Stan Pappy. Don't remember him either. Kurt Bakbavakwa. I don't remember him either, even though he pitched the Buckos. And Enos again. So yeah, the 10 card sticker set. Here's a cool one. I definitely had this as a kid. Suter and Raleigh Fingers. Like that one. And there's a Rigetti rookie card. Not a bad one at all. Pretty nicely centered as well. And a Yout right behind the Rigetti rookie. Pretty decent pack. And Juan Eichelberger kind of ruined that one. Louis Salazar. But uh, nice Yout. Rigetti rookie. 
good ones there. And the Raleigh and Bruce Suter, of course. Rigetti Spaghetti. So I think it's safe to say that this box was not tampered with, judging by how we found pretty much everyone in here, other than the uh, Ripken. Unless somebody just went through and pulled that one out. Lazinski. Has a Carew All Star card. Haven't seen that one yet. Definitely good collation on this. Surprising for this era of cards. Chris Chambliss. Have not seen him yet tonight. Adam says, I remember back in the 80s, Sam's Club had shelves full of wax boxes. I never had Sam's Club near me. Didn't have a Sam's Club until probably about 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, tops. Um, Lou Pinella again and Tom Herr. So I didn't get to experience that. I know that whenever 92 Bowman came out, I think it was Sam's Club or Costco that had 92 Bowman, and um, people were just savagely tearing those off the shelves from what they can keep in stock when those boxes first came out. And it's pretty wild, 92 Bowman still, those boxes still sell for like 400 bucks after all these years. Now, if the uh, if the grading card industry wasn't so big, I wonder if they'd still sell for the same amount. I, I really doubt it. Probably wouldn't even be close. So now on Trammell, Dawson All-Star, Ozzy Smith. Love that card. I'm glad we finally saw that one. Another hot pack here. Dawson, Ozzy, and Brett in action. Corey's the centering is not bad at all in these cards. It really isn't compared to what I've seen out of a lot of other 80s boxes. And there's a Dawson sticker. Cool one. Haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, it'd be nice to open a box of 80 tops, but um, not one to pay two grand for a box of those. A little, a little too expensive. Even 81 tops. I love 81 tops design too. Those are pretty pricey. 83 is up there. 85 are still not too bad. I want to say that uh, I should have bought a box of 85 recently, but I. Missed the boat on those, and they are gone now at the honey hole. Fred Lynn, Pedro Guerrero, my favorite for probably like six months when I was a little kid. Mickey Rivers in action. This design is so basic, but at the same time, it's awesome. Wish that uh, modern day tops would follow their old examples here. Jim Morrison, Nolan Ryan sticker. Nice. Very cool. Number 41, so. Definitely a bigger set than we expected originally. There's a Vita Blue, a Milk May. Cool one. Another Yount coming up, or is that a Molitor? It's a Molitor. This one's a little centered better than the other one we pulled earlier. And here's a weird blemish on Mike Cubbage. Some sort of, I don't know, Stain, Lance Parrish, and John Montefusco again. Ryan H is 2K for 80. How much is the Henderson worth? That can't be worth buying at all. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's primarily all due to the grading. I mean, a, a PSA 10 Henderson, if you pull one, like I said, you, many times you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning on your couch in your house on a sunny day. But uh, PSA 10 Henderson is like $30,000. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. So because of that, the possibility in the, of pulling that, even though the probability is next to nothing, um, that's what causes them to be so, so expensive. Jack Moore's base, Gillard Perry. I had that one as a kid too. I always liked that one. Didn't have too many early 80s tops cards when I was a kid. I think like when I first started collecting, I had a beat up and creased Mattingly 86 tops, and I loved it. I still have that one too. And a... Um, crappy looking top loader Bruce Benedict and back to back Bruce Benedict's kind of weird Greg Nettles again and Burt Blylevin Mike Hargrove and Blylevin Tom Bernanski rookie card with Luis Sanchez Vukovic again and Pete Rose highlights again not a bad one to see two of Burt be home Blylevin Paul L says one, pa one pack left for J.H., hoping for something in here for you, man. I've seen a lot of nice cards in your stack so far, but no Ripken. There's a second year of Baines. I don't know if I've ever seen this one before. I 
think I like the picture on that one better than his actual rookie in 81. Chet Lemon. Lamar Johnson. A lot of Pete Rose in this box. Gary Maddox again. Not a bad thing at all. I don't think so, at least. Carney Lansford and not the one we're looking for. I thought it was going to be for a second. Some guys that most of you probably never heard of. Orlando Sanchez and no Ripken or Lee Smith in that stack, Jay. We tried and we definitely found a lot of nice stuff, but neither one of the big chase cards in that one. And that takes us to our very last stack here for Criterium Racer. If he is still in here, he said this is definitely probably his favorite set ever. So let's hope uh, for some nice pulls for him. Frank D says, did Jay at least get a Fisk? Well, we saw a Fisk in there somewhere earlier. I don't know if Jay got it or not, but um, he definitely got some nice ones. Last stack, Lee H. Good luck to you, man. Just hoping if we do uh, find one of those rookies, it's, they're not ruined by gum. You bet, Jay. I will see you in your live stream here at 9.30, man. For the 87 Don Russ. John Littlefield. He's got a nice reverse negative error card in 82 Fleer. There's a Fernando Base second year. Oh, weird looking squiggly autograph. <laughs> Eat the gum. Last stack magic. Well, if you say so. Since you said it, Chuck, I will do it. Cool looking C record. Looking very pissed off. Never seen that one. I like that Eddie Murray a lot. And there's Mike Armstrong, a.k.a. AK BTK Killer. And his rookie card, Chris Chambliss. That gum was actually uh, probably some of the best gum that I've eaten from the 80s, honestly. Like, it was actually really good. I kind of want to eat another piece now. But I won't put you through that. So we got Gary Carter on top here, an all-star card of his. I'm not seeing that one yet. It it looks good on camera. It tastes even better. <laughs> I assure you, Ron Guidry. Danny Ainge. It's a second year for him. Cool one. Dave Concepcion, I haven't seen that one yet in action. John Candelaria. And Ken O'Burkfell. <laughs> Nick says, sounded like he was eating drywall. <laughs> it was really good. It definitely was. Hopefully we pull his Ripken so I can celebrate with some more. Keith Hernandez. And more future stars that we're not too interested in. And Bob Horner. Second pack down. Are we going to find this Ripken? I can't remember if Eric opened 82 Tops or not. I know he did uh, a couple other ones. I think he did 82 Fleer and 82 Don Russ. Maybe he did do 82 Tops. If he did, I don't know if he found the Ripken or not. Future Stars as accountants. I'll try to read these comments. Get caught up. Doug O'Shea says, Someone named Sean Clark just won your brother's 1953 Mantle, Mickey Mantle card. I didn't even know Eric was giving that away. Is that the one that was PSA, like a PSA, like... Three or four, I think. Blah, love, and bass. Another nice one there. I'll have to check that out. It's pretty awesome for him. Bo Diaz, there's a Fisk. We're just talking about him. All-star card. Omar Moreno. Dennis Lamp. Chet Lemon. Bada Blue in action. Eichelberger again. Eichelberger possibly. Uh, Battle and watch there. PSA 2. That's what it was. I knew he picked it up at the National, but I couldn't remember which uh, what grade it was. 
definitely a cool card. I don't own any mantle, uh, any mantle cards at all, but uh, one of these days I will change that. Once I'm done going off the rookie cards and error cards, I'll probably start going back more and going into the vintage stuff. Baines, second year again. Rod Carew. Frank D, well, uh, thank you for saying so, man. I appreciate that. Willie Akins. And not the rookie we're looking for again. It's still no Lee Smith, either Daryl Porter. Looks like he has a windowless white van that he's going to invite you into, whether you like it or not. So steer clear of Daryl Porter. Vita Blue in action again. And again, Juan Eichelberger. Definitely, he is officially on the Bad Omen Watch. <laughs> and if any of you guys that... Uh, or part of this break. If you want some of that gum, I will send it to you. I don't really want to, but I will share it because it is definitely tasty. Dave Smith, Andre Dawson, all-star card again. The last time we saw him, we did a pretty good pack. I think Ozzy Smith followed him up last time. Greg Nettles. TR Prisoner Steve's 82 and 81 best designs of the decade. They were awesome, man. 81 was awesome as well. Fred Lynn. Kent DeColve and Britt Burns. Jem Mintz is demanding a Ripken pool. I hope we see one, man. We have four packs left. I'll be bummed if we don't. Ripping for Ripken says, send me one. I will try it on camera, too. I'll definitely throw one in there for you. Four packs left. Yeah, come on. Ripken or Lee Smith. Preferably a Ripken here for Lee H. Criterium Racer. If he is still in here. Fred Lynn again on top. I see a Dickie Thon in the back. I want to say that's his rookie card, so we might get the shaft on uh, this pack as well. 62 tops definitely is an awesome design. I love 68 tops too. So many, uh, so many cool designs from those older years. Jeff Burrows again. No Ripken in this pack. John Tudor looks so young in that card. And Dickie Thawne must be 81. He has a rookie card in. Yeah, I think it is 81 tops. He shares a card with two other people. Someone needs a cow, Corey says. Well, hopefully someone gets a cow of these three packs. I hope so. Paul else, is that John Tudor low-key remind me of Van Snyder? I'm glad you said that because there definitely is a striking resemblance there between the two of them. Gaylord Perry again. Glenn Hoffman. Scotty Arms says, eat the gum. You know what? I did a little bit ago, and it was amazing. Our Bosky has a pretty cool air card, 82 Fleer. And there's that Raleigh and Bruce Suter again, along with David Getty rookie card. And Robin Yount. So not a bad trio there at all whatsoever. No gum on the Yount. I don't, eh, a little bit. But, uh, Really can't tell too much, but decent pack there. Two more left for Lee. I see Fernando's very timid face peeking out. The mad Hungarian. Absolute Authentics is 1,100 on Eric's live video. He should have sent us over here. Wow, 1,100 people. That's pretty wild. Well, I appreciate all you guys for being here. Thank you very much for your support. And checking these old cards out. Love this set. Milt Wilcox. Haven't seen that one yet. And there's that Tom Seaver again. He's pissed off because someone stole his lunch money or something. I don't know. Last pack. Paul also I used to win all the cahoots. I don't need more giveaway wins. <laughs> Last pack. Magic Arm says, fingers crossed. We got 157 people in here. Thanks for being here, guys. Sticking it out to the very last pack, and hopefully there's a Ripken in here for Lee. Hey, Fitzy. Legion, what's happening? Thanks for popping in here, you guys. On the very last pack of tonight. And then we're ripping a case of 90 tops. I don't know how much you miss me opening those. Lee Mazzilli. Last pack magic, Max says. I hope so, man. John Littlefield again. 
Here is one we have not seen for Hoskin Powell. Be stroking. Thanks, man. Jeff Reardon. It's his second year Reardon. Not that too many people probably care. Leon Roberts. Steve Kemp and Dan Petrie. And we did not find a Ripken. Did not find a Ripken and did not find a Lee Smith rookie. That is how it goes sometimes, though. Lee H., appreciate you partaking in the break. I will have some extras out to all you guys, like I always do for anyone that buys in the breaks. I like to hook you guys up, so um, keep an eye out for those. And this package will probably ship out tomorrow or the next day. No Ripken, but uh, still fun to go through those. Found a lot of awesome Hall of Famers and saw quite a few of them, so still fun regardless. I want to thank you guys all for being here. Um, and I should have uh, some more stuff for you later this week. I'm going to Get off my lazy butt and try to put out some more videos and some different stuff for you. So keep an eye out for that. Appreciate you guys being here. And um, see you guys all in Jay's Openings live stream here at 930. So head over there. I'm going to head over there now. Uh, hopefully see you guys there. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching.